RBS Business Research Academy welcomes to you in another very important video. And this, in this video, I'm, I have discussed about the three terms normally we are using in our research. The first one is referencing, citation, and bibliography. Uh, dear friends, mostly we are using these words, but exactly we are not uh, knowing the difference among these three uh, concepts or we can say the words. So, so that's why uh, the basic job of this video is to tell you that the, how the references are different from the bibliography and how the citations are different from the references as well as in the bibliography. So this is a completely a uh, theoretical video in this, uh, I have discussed about the, some important theoretical concept regarding the referencing, citation and bibliography. Why, like the, what is the basic difference between the referencing and citation? Mostly the people are unable to, to differentiate these two words with each other. So my another uh, video, there is about part two of this video in which practically I have discussed how you can create the uh, citation and the referencing in MS Word with the help of the APA. APA means the American Psychological Association. So these are different type of the reference, uh, referencing and the citation styles are there. So APA is the much more popular among all those ones. So now regarding all the uh, citation and referencing style I have discussed in the uh, video uh, video in the part two of this video. So let's start to, uh, to discuss the, these concepts. But before this, me, my name is Dr. Naimak Sumru, and I'm from Shabti University, Pakistan. So dear friends, if we talk about the bibliography. So dear friends, bibliography is a list that goes at the end of the work of your research writing. So uh, mostly we are showing our bibliography at the end of our writing research writing work, like our work, maybe a thesis, maybe a, 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 like the dissertation, maybe a research paper or any other document which you are writing. At the end of your document, normally we are providing the bibliography of, the, of all the resources which you utilize in developing or in writing a research paper. Then another thing is about the preparing bibliography, a researcher help to keep the track of the sources they consulted in the site. So now the, uh, the one good benefit of this uh, uh, creating a bibliography, that means that it will provide you a track, a track of the sources which you consulted or cited or referred during the, your work on which you are, uh, that means during uh, writing a thesis or, or writing a research paper. Then if we use a material from the book, normally we use the, uh, some material to develop a one document by referring a book, by referring a journal or website or any newspaper or someone's interview, someone's lecture anywhere. So now if we do not refer, if you do not provide any citation, any reference of the uh, material which you are getting, uh, which, are, uh, which are getting from the other sources, that is called a pedism. So now pedism is basically a serious crime uh, not the crime, but it's offense. It's a, it's a serious offense being considered as a serious offense at the various college and the uh, university. So now definitely, because when, when uh, it is all about the IPO, intellectual property rights. So there is a, whenever you are using any uh, property uh, right of another ones without his or her permission, or even though without quoting his or her name in your document, that again, it is unethical as well as is an offense. So that's why we should avoid from the plagiarism. Okay, so several softwares are, are there through which you can detect this as the, the level of the plagiarism in your software. And one famous uh, software is our CIMART, uh, that's about the trend 18, that's very famous. Okay, so now uh, another thing is that is about the reference. So now reference is the description of the document from which you have obtained your information. Whatever information you have obtained from any document, you are providing complete information of that document from where you have uh, they say, uh, you have received uh, some of the information, like uh, this one uh, reference, like the this one reference, uh, like the the name of the uh, the document from which we have obtained some information. This or uh, the name of its author is this one, Mekker, and it was published in the 1993. And this is the title of your uh, research paper, and then this is the name of the. Uh, research journal in which it was published. Then see, you are the all the whole title of the journal is in italic. So now this is the one distinction uh, feature of the AP style from the rest of other AP styles. 
Then again, uh, like you are seeing the volume and then the page number. So now in this way, we can provide the reference at the end of our document, and that's a citation. So now in citation are something we call as an in-text citation because within the text, you have to provide the citation. So now here you in the citation, we are acknowledging the source from where we have borrowed or from where we have obtained some information within the research paper. So this is the one way through which you can uh, provide the citation of the document in your uh, research paper. And then uh, the exact difference between the reference and, uh, and the bibliography. Uh, the term reference or bibliography are often simultaneously being uh, uh, used by the people, but actually there's a difference between these two concepts. Reference means that the other item that you have read specifically referred to in your work. That means that whatever you have read, and if you are going to, uh, or if you have uh, cited or if you provide the reference of the in your document, means your research paper, it is your reference. And the list of the sources at the end of assignment will be headed as a reference. So now whatever the references which are generating at the end, those, those will be generated of your document and its title will be reference. On the other hand, the term bibliography is there. Now the bibliography means a list of everything you read. Whatever you have read so far, in order to develop a one document, whatever. So that is called is a bibliography. Whether you have uh, referred specifically it or not, whether you have referred it into your document or not. So that is called the bibliography. From this point of view, you can say that the reference is a part of your bibliography. So that means the bibliography has a two sections. One section is that means that those as uh, like the uh, documents which you have referred, but uh, which have consulted, but we have not referred, uh, of which you have not provided any citation in your document that is called bibliography. And those documents you have, which you have consulted and of which uh, you have provided some of the, uh, like the citation or uh, reference in the document that is called as a reference. Bibliography normally contains the sources that have been cited and those found to be influential, but decided not to cite. Now, whatever the sources which you have considered some of the sources may be highly influential for you but even you decided not to cite so now any source which you have decided not to cite but you have consulted that is called as a bibliography bibliography can give a tutor an overview of your uh, of which the authors have influenced your idea here tutor means your supervisor research supervisor your teacher who is teaching you some some courses so now is they providing a one view overview uh, they visa whatever the writers or authors you have consulted and what are different arguments which are there. Why do we know difference? The reasons are there. The first to acknowledge the others, but that's very important. If you are using someone's work, you have to acknowledge that it's again ethics. Okay. Another reason is to allow the other readers to find the original source easily cited for. So now you are also providing a one a type of the tool that the other people can also reach on this date. Uh, tool, uh, the type of the information which you have borrowed from someone else. So if you're providing a one reference over there. Another reason uh, to provide the reference is that to get recognition and authentication of your work. If you are citing someone in this way, basically you are creating, you are enhancing the quality and authentication of your research work as well as your own recognition will be enhanced when you are uh, providing some uh, valid reference and citation of someone work which has been consulted by you in your research paper. Another reason is that to make the work informative. Now, definitely, if you are quoting someone now, that is a trustworthy because it is not your own version, but the, this version has been borrowed from by you from somewhere else. And the, the reference of that person you are showing in your document in this way basically you are going to increase the quality of your document as well as the information the trustworthiness of the information you are providing in your document and then the another thing that to trace intellectual development of your ideas you present whatever the idea which you are presenting in your research paper its intellectual development will also be testified if you are providing a one reference or citation of the same in your document. Last but not the least, a major uh, like the role of the reference is also to avoid the plagiarism. Already I have talked about the plagiarism and uh, already I have uh, also informed you that there is a serious type of the issue in the, among the activities of the every university. 
Now, what are the present examples are there? For example, the exact copy of the other's work without acknowledgement. If you are exactly copying the work of another one, that is like, just like the unique, the copy and paste tool, if you're using these two tools and without acknowledging someone's, uh, like the, that document, it's clear an example of the plagiarism. Then the another thing about the close paraphrasing. Paraphrasing means that the, to say something, someone's in your own words. So close paraphrasing of others were by simply changing the few words of altering the order of the presentation. Like the, the sentence which are presented in some other words, you are taking as it is, and then you are making, uh, uttering some of the words over there, not the complete thought which is over there. So now this is also another example of the plagiarism. The another example is about the unacknowledged quotation of the phrases. If you are quoting some of the phrase and if you are not uh, acknowledging in any way, then again, it's another uh, example of the criticism and just copying the other's idea, just copying the other's whole research paper. Uh, there is also an example of the criticism. Uh, what needs to be referenced, what type of the thing we should refer in your paper, in your document. The first thing is that, has it been present formally in the public domain in some way, like the, in case of the, someone uh, if you have referred, uh, if you have considered any research paper, that means this research paper was formally submitted by someone in the public domain. Now, public domain means any research journal on any website, or someone has made uh, some speech somewhere. So this is called the public domain. If you have, uh, that means uh, like the considered any type of the uh, that document which has been publicly uh, presented by the someone, then it is your responsibility. Here, the reference is required to provide in your document. And another thing is about, has it been presented in a tangible form, like the printed material, internet, public talk, or like this one? If it's presented in this form, then again, it needs to be referred. Uh, reference, not the referred. Uh, does someone have uh, any ownership of it? Do you think anyone has, is owning this one? Then if it is the, if any intellectual property light is the ownership of someone, then you have to mention that person. Uh, look for a named author, writer, organization, uh, including website, whatever. Then you, you have to provide the name of the organization, name of the writer, the name of the uh, website or host, whatever. And another thing, there is, uh, is information present in the source of the question outside the real realm of the common knowledge. You think that is an uncommon knowledge? If it is a whatever you are present, if it is a common knowledge, then okay, there is no only problem. Everyone knows that this is the work of this one even you though you are presenting the same argument in your document even you are not referring the name of that person but people know that this is not your own work but this is the work of someone so that's why it is called a common knowledge if there is a common knowledge when to present to give the source of the table pictures statistic diagram if you are using any table or pictures from somewhere else or any facts and figure or any diagram whatever you are uh, there is a uh, consulting or from another document. If you are presenting the same in your own document, then there is a need to provide a citation and reference. To get, get, now, to give credibility to an argument presented by you, whatever argument you are giving, if you, now, if you are providing one citation, reference, that in this way, basically you are enhancing the credibility of argument and overall, the, uh, at the end, the overall credibility of your document, you are going to increase by providing the citation and reference of the document which was consulted by you. When describing the theory model practice associated with the particular writer, if you are working, uh, if you are referring any theory, if you're borrowing any model, then it is necessary for you to provide a citation and the reference of the theory of that model. When paraphrasing another uh, person's idea that you feel is particularly significant, uh, sometimes we are paraphrasing or sometimes we are writing someone's idea in our own words. If you are doing the same thing, then again, it is necessary to provide the citation and reference of the same thing. Dear friends, here you're looking at one image which has been taken from the MS Word. Uh, in that way, in the reference section. If you go in the reference section of this one, you are finding a one citation and bibliography. If you have a style, a style, if you click this one, you will find different types of the styles are there. APA style, Chicago, uh, GOST, Harvard, IEEE, MLA, and then the 
hydroxytropin. So different type of the uh, citation and dispersing studies are being used by the people in the different areas. So the first or very famous style of the uh, citation and referencing is about the uh, American Psychological Association or APA style. So mostly the people who are working in the social sciences, they are uh, referring the American Psychological Association. Like the people who are working in the psychology, based administration, education, uh, like the economics, uh, sociology, like the political science, international relations, so different fields which are uh, related with the social sciences that mostly people are using uh, the AP style. So this is the image of the seventh uh, main, uh, edition of the manual of the AP style. So now recently it has been uh, uh, like the introduced by the AP style, that means the organization, and now the people are using this one. So earlier, a seventh, a sixth edition was available, but right now a seventh edition is also available. Now, another uh, style is about the Chicago manual of style. Normally, we use in the history, find out, and the law. But people, in, even in the business, you can also use it. But mostly, we are working on the AP style in case of the business. So then now, this is the one image of the Chicago manual of the style. And another uh, style is that is about the MLA, Modern Language Association, MLA. Normally, the people who are referring this type of the referencing style uh, in, in the field of the humanities, literature, and linguistics, and the arts. So this is the image of the MLA. Uh, another very uh, famous is about the Howard system. So now the people are using this type of system from the humanities, literature, linguistics, and art. And then there's a Vancouver system used in the medical and the scientific journals. So now this is the source of the reference. That means from where we can get the reference, like the book, journal, newspaper, conference paper, our proceedings, annual report, institution, our government publications, and electronic sources like the website, CD-ROM database, thesis report, unpublished, and there may be some other sources. And elements of the reference, that means whenever you are producing providing a one reference for the common elements of that reference. The very important element is about the author, then the title of the document, then the date or the year of publication, place of publication, edition, periodicity, that I like its volume, issue, and the series, in which series. So now uh, this is the one uh, example of the reference. Now when you have the one author, how you can provide the reference uh, according to the APA style. So now this is the one reference where only one author is there, but this is the, this one is according to the APA style. So now this one is the name of this uh, the author, this is the date or a year, and this is the article title. So you're looking this complete article title is there, and then it is a general name, Canadian General of the Microbiology, which is written in the italic form. Then that's a volume, that's an issue, and these are the pages. And this is the DOI, Digital Object Identifier. And uh, then another this image where more than one author are available. So now everything is same, just the name of the author has been increased. Then uh, if there is reference style in the AP, this is the, in, uh, the Chicago of the manual site. This is another one and MLA. In the MLA, you can provide the reference in like this one. Okay, dear, uh, this was all about the different uh, citations over there. Now, at the end of this video, I would like to show you some of the uh, two important websites regarding that. So this website is uh, Purdue University, which has provided a complete detail about the AP style workshop. So if you want to know more about the AP style, then this website provides a complete information about the AP style. Like the first you are looking here, what is AP style? Then why use APA style? So reasons are there, who should use this one? Now here you are looking at the, who should use? Now the people who are working in the field of the social sciences, such as psychology, linguistics, sociology, economics, criminology, business, and even the nursing, or even the medical sciences, uh, the people also using the APA style. So now some more information is available about the uh, 
API is tied. Complete information is there. So different books which are available on this one, the detail of these books is, is also available, like you're looking here, the list of the books. And then uh, another good thing of this website is that not only it has provided the complete information about the APA, but also MLA, Chicago, IEEE, AMA, ASA, and the AP style now. So that means the complete information is available about the different uh, referencing in citation styles are also available on this website. So from this point of view, it's a wonderful website. And in the website, which I want to show that is about the referencing, how we can provide the reference. So this is another website. Uh, that means how to reference authors in APA format. Now, when there is no only author of the document, now how to present that document where the author of the document is not available. So in this chart, example, a student guide to APA format, just nine, this is a year and this is the psychological week, psychology weekly, and then a volume and the pages are there if the author is not available. And then if the one author uh, you want to write, then the, this is the name of that author and then just the name of the, uh, the title of your uh, research paper. And then this is the name of the journal. And you see that the, that one is in the italic format. And then the volume in the journal, uh, like the volume, and then these are the page numbers. And uh, uh, then you're looking here, this is the, what? The citation. So this one is completely a reference. And this one is our citation. Like this is also another citation. Now this type of citation we provide in the uh, middle of the, are uh, in the uh, start of this one, are in the middle of this one. And this type of the we provide at the end of the our uh, paragraph. Uh, then if you have the two authors, then this is the way in which you can provide the number one author and the number two author and the rest of the things are same. And uh, in this way, again, if uh, how to cite, this is the way to cite when you have the two authors. So normally we are referring the authors by their surnames. Uh, of the both authors, in, in, especially in case of the citation. And then if you have the three to 20 authors, then the, this is the way in which you can provide all the list of your authors. And uh, even though if the third authors are more than 20, then this is the way in which you can provide the author's names over here. So uh, this was all about this video. I hope you like this video. Uh, and uh, again, uh, I believe that the uh, you will, uh, you have liked this video and uh, you will also share this video with your rest of your friends. You will also uh, like to subscribe my channel. So thank you very much for watching this video.